All right, some of you have asked for me to review or try a tutorial on motion page because unfortunately motion page does not have many tutorials which i find extremely concerning or not concerning but it turns me off and they're like i tried to not get this plugin because of this reason anyway this is another story for another time let's move on so today we're going to be building a vertical horizontal vertical scroll so you start the page scrolling vertically on the first section the hero section obviously then we have three sections that are all horizontal scrolling and then one, once that effect is done we move on to scrolling back to to vertical so let's get into it all right so we're starting with a blank canvas and we're going to start building our structure keep in mind that the structure is very important so follow each step in order for this effect to work otherwise it's not going to work we're going to have issues and so on so keep that in mind all right let's get into it what i'm going to do i'm just going to add a container so let me just basically click on the container <laughs> i have to get used to this it takes some time all right we're going to set this to full width and of course the height is going to be 100 vh as always and um i think i'm also going to give it a, a color so we can differentiate between each section and we do not confuse ourselves all right so i'm gonna go with uh this light sand whatever it is and i'm gonna add in this container a heading so i'm going to make sure that this heading is not this color any color but this color i'm gonna set it to black black and let's bring it in the middle oh one second so let's bring everything center 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 super center all right and we are going to change the content to b1 so we have this first element on the page i'm going to just set this to be to rem or bigger so we can see it better <laughs> All right, so I will duplicate this container right here just because it speeds things up and I will just delete this. We do not need this. Now it comes the part where we have to think about our structure. As I said, there needs to be a structure and there will be a few divs involved here. So there is a parent div uh, child div and then the grandchildren containers divs whatever you call them it's very important to keep this structure again <laughs> I have to say it because I will probably get comments where people will say it's not working for me why I followed all the steps and then the steps were not followed just saying all right so I will change the color of this first of all to of course differentiate so i am going to make it i let's say this awesome green i have here all right so i am going to give this container a name you can just keep it the way it is but i think it's going to help in having the structure in mind and how it works so i will call this container scroll trigger because uh once the page reaches this container so we are here and once we scroll to this page then motion page and all the values and everything that we have set in motion page will know that this at this point we um at this point basically once we reach the top part of the page this is when the animation of horizontal scroll starts so this is when uh, the sections will be horizontal scrolled <laughs> I hope this is clear I don't know I think it's clear so far so in this container I'm going to add another container so again to make my life easier and yours I will duplicate this container and copy it or let's first name it and this is going to be scroll our scroll container and I'm looking on another screen because I have the structure on there and I don't want to uh, mess it up and bore you to death. 
So I'm gonna paste this container inside. Let's just delete this one. All right, so, so far this is the structure we have, the scroll trigger and the scroll container. And this scroll container will contain our sections that will be scrolled. So you can add however many sections you want. I think the middle ground here is about three. I don't think more is necessary um, in terms of, I mean, users are not really used to scrolling horizontally on a website. So that would make it a little bit standoffish, just my opinion. Now, whatever you want to do is up to you. All right, so again, I'm going to copy this, duplicate this container, and I will simply name this section. And as you can see, it's empty, but I want to add something in here. It's going to be our um, heading. So don't worry, you see it, that it's outside of the scroll container. We are going to move it in there. But for now, I am going to go and add a heading in there. And it went right in. Actually, let me just go and copy this style here. And replace it with the next number is 2. All right, I am also going to change the color of this section again just to differentiate once we start scrolling through things. Uh, okay, this is not the nicest color, but okay, for now, let's keep it like that. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it in here. I will delete this. Actually, I could have left it for the last section, but anyway. All right, so what I have to do now is simply duplicate, duplicate, and I will just change the colors of these con uh, containers, sections, to different colors, of course. And uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult because I don't have many colors yet. Okay, I'm gonna choose this yellow and last color is going to be an orange. I know, very colorful, but it's important for you to see this section scrolling so okay let's change two and three and four and now let's duplicate the first container and this will be the container that is our fifth container let's go in and change the number to five and voila we are pretty much done in, in so far. Uh, we will have to do some other work, which is extremely important for this. And if you miss these steps, trust me, it will not work and it will be a headache in motion page. So let's go in the scroll container and make sure that the direction of the sections is horizontal. And now, of course, we have them sitting like this. It's all good, all fine. But we need each section to take the width of our desktop, right? So we can have them scrolling through. All right. What we need to do is go in each section. Let's go in this section. And go to advanced and go to... Um, size and make sure that the flex scroll and flex shrink are set to zero. Voila. <laughs> I know, right? Kind of magic. Not really. It's just CSS. All right. I mean, CSS is magic sometimes. All right. So we are going to be doing the same thing for all of them. And you will see at some point we are going to get an overflow we should get an overflow on the page, of course. If we're not, um, it doesn't matter. We are still going to have to set the, this is very strange, I'm not getting an overflow, but it's okay. Let's move on. Let's set the scroll trigger section, container actually, not section, 
container. Let's set this to uh, an overflow hidden just in case because we don't want to have that nasty bar on the bottom. We don't want that to, to show. And I'm also going to set the HTML tag to div. This is just a personal preference. Um, I don't think it's really impacting how this is going to work in motion page. But okay, now it's time to move into motion page and let's get into that. So if you have installed already motion page, you can see here in your dashboard under pages where your page is, you will see that you can edit with motion page as you can edit with Elementor. So this is the best way to do it. Or you can go to motion page and do it from there. But since we are here, let's go from here. All right, this is our page and this is how it's working so far. Now we have to do the hard work. So let's get into that. If something happened and the page that you want to apply your effect is not seen on the screen like this, then you can go and look for it here or just type the name of the page that you want to edit with motion page. All right. So first thing first, we do not this effect to happen on page load. Obviously we want it to happen on scroll trigger. So we're going to select scroll trigger. First things first, right? And as you can see immediately, I think by now you are familiar with these markers that show you where the animation starts and ends on the page. So this is pretty helpful. So I'm going to lock the scroll bar. As you can see, as you hover over each uh, option on uh, Notion, on, not Notion, on <laughs> motion page, uh, you will be uh, explained what each thing is. So I'm not going to start explaining these things. I will just go ahead and they have documentation and etc. etc. All right. So I'm going to lock the scroll bar and I'm going to leave the delay to to be one. I'm going to select pinned element. And here we have to actually select uh, the element that will be pinned. So once. So that means that the the scroll trigger container will be pinned to the top while the animation uh, goes through and then they, it will be unpinned as uh, we scroll further down. All right, so <laughs> this is pretty weird, but you have to go here and go on the page. Obviously, um, this is called scanning, selector scanning. Uh, you have to look for the selector that you want to target. So we're going scroll trigger container. I can see it here, but you can just click on the page and look for it. Of course, it's not here. Uh, I kind of overlooked this. Uh, I forgot, obviously. <laughs> uh, in order for us to target the elements, the containers and the sections, we need to have set selectors. And by selectors, I mean classes. I think they can be also IDs. Uh, in this case, I'm going to copy this here, this name, and I'm going to use it as a class for the scroll trigger container. And I will go to the scroll container, copy this class, and I will add it in here as a CSS class and then publish. And then let's go to our uh, motion page. I am going to refresh. And now let's go again to pin this to scan <laughs> selectors. And uh, for sure, we will get one or the other. Hmm. Sometimes it doesn't work. OK, we have the scroll container, but we want the scroll trigger. So since we don't have it, we have to actually type it in ourselves. So you do start with the class dot. So you say scroll trigger. Of course, this will be the, the, the class that you have set it can be other than what I said, but make sure that you uh, copy the right class. All right. So 
Now we have to set the animation start and end. So it starts whatever and ends whatever. Okay, we want it to start at the top once it reaches 0%. 0%. So at the top, as you can see, that's where it starts. Exactly there. When our scroll trigger reaches the start of your board. Okay. And then it ends at the bottom it ends at the bottom and we also have to to choose to change this to selector and selector so we have to add our scroll trigger selector it starts at the top of the scroll trigger and it ends at the end of the scroll trigger container if that makes any sense i hope it does all right so i'm gonna Try to scan it again, look for it. And voila, we have it. Scroll trigger. Uh, sc no, actually, no, we need a scroll trigger. And again, the scroll trigger is hiding from us for whatever reason. No, we don't want that. All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste it right here. And that should be okay. All right, now when it reaches, we need it to, to, we need to set this value to when it reaches uh, a percentage. So I found that 100 minus 100 was the best, but we might have to uh, change this. All right, so now again, we will have to scan for the animation selector. So the, we need to select the selector that or choose the selector that is going to be animated and in our case is the container the scroll container so let's look for it uh, it is here and we are going to have to set the animation from to two so the the starting point to the end point as you can imagine we want to animate horizontally and that means axis so we are going to set a value in here. Let's see if this actually works because in the video that I have um, posted on my, it kind of works, but not really. Okay, let's also set the value of the two and this is going to be minus 150, uh, 150, 150. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't really work because we have an extra, I would say 50 and 50 at the beginning at, at, at the end. So in, as I said, as I wanted to say, in the video that I showed you as an example on my post page on YouTube, I had actually four sections and that's why the value was set for 150. So if I set it to 100, here and 100 here let's see if that works actually it works so you will have to play with this value depending on many sections you have so you have for for example if you have three sections then you have to set the from animation to a hundred percent and two to minus a hundred percent do not Ask me why, but this is how it is. If you have four, you increase it to 100 and minus 150 and 150 percentage. And that's about it. And I will just save my animation. I will go and have a look. So let's have a look. Number two, number three, number four, and number five. I mean, it's very easy. I really have to figure out how to do it co with code. I started, but somehow I got so stuck. I don't know, for some reason, motion page made it clear to me on how this needs to work in code as well and structure wise. And I might have a video coming up with custom code where if you don't have a motion page, you can use GSAP to achieve this effect. Stay tuned for that. 
If you'd like to see what else you can build with Elementor, watch this playlist here or here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video and I'll see you next time.